No line at the DMV, that's usually a good thing, but today it was anything but. Now school officials wouldn't talk with us, but we found plenty of students that had a lot to say. Death Festival has tons of fun games and activities, but this event goes beyond a day of entertainment. Police Chief Greg Sir says what's the point of stop and frisk when his force is already getting guns off the street? From now on, the southern hemisphere is going to get tilted towards the sun a little bit more than we are, and we're going to start experiencing that cooler weather. Going up and down these escalators, you may notice a vile smell. We found out today it's coming from underneath your feet. Now, as the night goes on, the results are coming in, and the candidates are neck and neck. But the Republicans here are still hopeful. What used to be a beautiful, pristine pond has become overrun with this green stuff. As you can see, the shuttle is finally on the platform. It's making its way to the hangar and finishing what Jeffrey Rudolph calls the longest parade in L.A. history. At the Science Center, Emily Davies for Valley View News. Police cleared the scene here only a few hours ago, but not before retrieving a body out of the water. The body was found floating just four or five feet away from this pier. Oakland police and fire departments responded to a call around 6.30 this morning to the estuary near the Jack London Aquatic Center. The call reported feet sticking out above the water. Oakland fire crews brought in boats to help retrieve the body. Sergeant John o. Watson says the body is still unidentified. The body uh, appears to be a male adult. It's unknown the age at this time. Police are also saying weights attached to the body are associated with the death. Investigators say this red car is also related to the case. One witness, Tyro Max, says his friend saw a man using the car and thinks the body may have been in the water for several days. He seen a guy sitting on the pier fishing all day. He would drink a big bottle of vodka. He said when he finished, he was this much left. And he didn't see him. He, he left. And he didn't see him no more. Police right now are calling this a suspicious death. It's unclear at this time which direction it's going to go, if it's going to be deemed a homicide or a suicide, and that's something that the investigators, along with the coroner's department, will be looking into. This is a busy waterfront popular with boaters, runners, and people fishing, and police are asking that anyone with more information please step forward. In Oakland, Emily Davies, KTVU, Channel 2 News. You may have thought seeing a space shuttle atop a Boeing 747 was an impressive sight. It was, but the second half of its homecoming trip was another thing entirely. The endeavor spent about a month at the LAX airport. But around 2 in the morning, it starts making its way out of the airport and through city streets to its permanent home at the California Science Center. Despite the early hours, people crowded the sidewalks to catch a glimpse of history. There's a lot of people that are missing this because they're sleeping, but they should be here. And it's great because this is like history. It's history and we're part of it. The shuttle has a wingspan of 78 feet and a body length of 122, making for an exceptionally difficult endeavor. It took nine months of planning to remove signs, trees, and other obstructions, as well as fortifying streets to take the weight of the shuttle. The venture has rung up quite a bill, too, but donors like Linda Ocean and her late husband's foundation gave generously. It's my husband's love. Astronomy, space, travel, math, children, inspiration. It's everything that he loved rolled into one. The Science Center has received about half of its $200 million fundraising goal. This will pay for Endeavor's trip from Florida, building a temporary hangar, and constructing a new permanent building for the shuttle. The first leg of Endeavor's trip was only about a mile and a half, but it took the shuttle nearly six hours to reach its first stop, going at no more than two miles an hour. Head of the Science Center, Jeff Rudolph, has been traveling along with Endeavor and says this is more than just a shuttle. Kids wanting to become astronauts, wanting to study science, and that's what we're really in this for. Now the shuttle Endeavor is just taking a little pit stop. It's going to stay here for about nine hours before it gets back on its trip to the California Science Center. In L.A., Emily Davies for Valley View News. Going up and down these escalators, you may notice a vile smell. We found out today it's coming from underneath your feet. It wakes you up in the morning, that's for sure. San Francisco BART writers like David Schwabe are getting a good whiff of pools of human waste sitting in escalator machinery at the Civic Center station. Homeless people can be found throughout the station and with limited public restroom facilities. BART spokesman Jim Allison says they sometimes get desperate. There are people who um, sometimes go into the escalator wells, stairwells, and sleep there. Um, they have nowhere else to go apparently or feel they have nowhere else to go and sometimes of course they go to the bathroom. The grates at the bottom of the escalators are not sealed and the waste simply slips through and piles up.
Recently, BART engineers went to work on one of nine broken escalators and discovered so much waste, a hazardous material crew had to be called in to clear it out. The general consensus? It's nasty. Nasty. Not dog. Nasty. Police say they have difficulty stopping this because offenders must be caught in the act in order for them to give a ticket. But many people seem sympathetic and say the lack of facilities is the real problem. The bathroom facilities for the homeless, are, there aren't any. And you can't use the restrooms that normal people use because they won't let you. Allison says the escalator problem is only a symptom of a bigger issue. We have to look at um, the homelessness issue in a holistic way. It's not a BART only problem, but BART needs to be at the table to look at solutions. But BART is considering putting enclosures over entrances like these to protect the stairwell. In San Francisco, Emily Davies, KTVU, Channel 2 News. Hundreds of people showed up to Los Angeles' 9th Annual Deaf Festival to celebrate deaf culture. That's no wonder since LA County has over 400,000 deaf and hard of hearing residents. Thanks to my volunteer interpreter, Hillary Wagner, I was able to find out more. I'm proud to be deaf. And she's not alone. This year's event theme was Express Yourself. People were able to enjoy a Def's Got Talent performance and a fashion show with Def designers and models. Dozens of vendors also came out to provide information and Def inspired products like this clothing line. Death Festival has tons of fun games and activities, but this event goes beyond a day of entertainment. What makes Def culture special is that it crosses all ethnicities, income levels, and ages. However, because the culture has come about due to a lack of hearing, it can lead to some misunderstandings. Some people think deafness is a disability, but it's not. It's just a different way of living. We are very capable of doing anything that we put our minds to. We have educators, businessmen, and big deaf actors too. Angel Dogs Foundation even applied this philosophy over to deaf dogs. Some people consider them disabled and we don't, just like we don't consider deaf people disabled. Deaf Festival's chair, Bertha Velasquez, started the event in 1999 because of her deaf daughter. I thought there was a need for it. I would, I would travel far for her to, to participate in deaf activities. Deaf Festival provides a venue for deaf people and those who know sign language to meet and bond. It also gives those who are new to deaf culture a chance to learn. So it's just about don't be scared to, you know, write something down or just try to communicate with us. A lot of us can lip read, but some of us can't. And it's not a struggle just to write things down, so don't be afraid to approach us. From LA City Hall, Emily Davies, Valley View News. Good morning, I'm Emily Davies. It's August 13th. We're following breaking news of a car crash that's been keeping investigators busy for hours. This is in Cupertino, where Prospect Road meets South Stelling Road. The crash happened just before 4 this morning. The two cars involved may have been racing at the time. We have a news crew on the way to gather more information. CSUN has one of the largest study programs in the nation for deaf and hard of hearing students. I've had the chance to learn some sign language from my own deaf friends on campus, so I decided to go to LA City Hall. That's where people celebrated Deaf Awareness Month for what they call Deaf Festival. The CSUN women's soccer team captures its first Big West Conference title. Emily Davies is going to tell us all about it and more. Hey, Emily. Hey, Mark. Yeah, that's right. The Lakers went into the game against Detroit Pistons looking for their first win of the season. Early in the first, Kobe on the fast break with a little shake and bake to put the Lakers up by six. He missed around and nearly got a triple-double with 15 points, seven rebounds, and eight assists. World Peace up the court to Darius Morris, the lob to Dwight Howard, and boom shakalaka. Midway through the third, Blake to Howard and rest in peace rim and net. Howard finished the game with 28 points and seven rebounds. The Lakers went on to win 108-79.